Foundation. <laughs> And uh, we've also got Chandler Smith on the line with us, who's the director of Ride the Rockies. I hope this is Chandler. Is that you? All right, good to hear you. Uh, so we are going to be repeating whatever Chandler says, which is why I'm wearing the headphones, uh, so people who are watching on streaming video can understand what we're doing. So thank you, Streambox, for providing that with us. Uh, let's start by introducing Polly Dawkins, director of the Davis Finney Foundation. Hi, I'm Polly Dawkins, Executive Director of the Davis Finney Foundation for Parkinson's. Uh, I'm Rich Noble, I'm one of the team members. Randy Rollman, another team member. Amanda Rubel, a team member. Lauren Hunt, uh, Program Manager for the Davis Finney Foundation. So team members, what, what is the team? What was it for? What were you doing? Well, we have a team of 19 people who rode the Rockies during uh, June. We all raised money and rode 550 miles to raise awareness and funds for the Davis Finney Foundation. Including our executive director. Yeah. She also <laughs> raised funds and rode the team. Yeah, so we have here, there are four of us, four of the team of 19 who rode the Rockies this year. And what was the purpose of having the team? Why did you join? Um, well, I initially joined because I knew a little bit about Davis Finney. I actually saw him race here in the early 80s when I first moved to Boulder. Um, and I knew very little about the disease. And uh, that week was a very educational and uh, inspirational week for me to find out more about it and to find out more about how the foundation helps and to be with people who have the disease and see how they live with it and are able to handle it. It, it was very impressive. Same question. Well, I've always, uh, like Rich, I've been a fan of Davis's uh, for many years, but being involved in cycling and uh, getting to know Davis and his family a little more and finding out about the disease uh, raised my awareness, something I hadn't thought of a lot in the past, and I come to find that more friends, family members, relatives, uh, unfortunately have had experience with Parkinson's and it's just something I feel very, uh, very serious about uh, finding we can do something about it. And whether it's an ultimate cure or just the, the fact that the, the Davis Finney Foundation gives hope and shows that you don't have to have the ultimate cure in order to live a quality life. I think that's extremely important. Um, one of my best friends, her father has had Parkinson's um, for nine years, and she was on the Davis Finney Foundation um, team last year. And so I happened to be her riding partner and got to see how great um, the team was and riding for a purpose. Um, not that we're not all out there riding for a purpose on our own, but it was wonderful to see that. And I've watched her um, with her father's disease, and so I felt it was a great time for me to help and contribute as well. So I joined this year. <laughs> now, Lauren, were you a big part of putting the team together? You're the program manager and with the Victory Crew. Is this kind of your project? <laughs> I hate to call you all the project. <laughs> uh, Holly and I have both been big recruiters for the team. So uh, yeah, we put the team together and, and then all of the logistics side is what I got to handle and I'm more of a cheerleader than anything else. And obviously you bonded during the, the trip because you're all <laughs> and you all have smiles on your face. Well, you know, there's one person here who uh, is not here, but I think is worth uh, you know telling how great she was, and that's her daughter Jenna. So, um, Absolutely. Uh, Lauren and Jenna every morning were out there, sort of supporting us as we were on the ride. They were doing laundry. Every afternoon, <laughs> every evening, and helping us out. They set up a tent every afternoon for the foundation so that there was information there and for places for people to stop by. And to have a 16 year old kid take a week of her life to do that as opposed to being out having fun, which is what I did when I was 16, <laughs> uh, it was wonderful. I mean, it was past great, it was wonderful. Obviously, laundry meant a lot because <laughs> when I was talking to you about being on the team next year, you said, "Well, you raise your funds, and we do laundry for you every day." That's one of the benefits. So, Chandler, um, now everyone else in here is not going to be able to hear you, so uh, bear with us. 
But uh, tell us a little bit about Ride the Rockies uh, allowing a team like the Davis Finney Foundation team to be a part of it. And none of us can hear Chandler, so let's <laughs> move along. <laughs> uh, so how exactly did you join the team? What happens? Uh, let's go ahead and start with you. Well, uh, Polly and <laughs> Lauren uh, are great at soliciting uh, help from people, and I think I think that's really what it comes down to with the with the Davis Finney Foundation is a, a collective help and and support among people. And they got the word out that they were forming this team, and they wanted interested riders and people who could come in and and also offer their services as far as raising money for the Davis Finney Foundation. And uh, I was more than ready to become a part of that. And having just moved here from North Carolina and uh, Putting down some roots in Boulder seemed like a, a great fit, and it was something I would have done even if I hadn't moved. So, mm -hmm. how much money did you have to raise? Um, the minimum was twenty-five hundred dollars for each participant or each team member, um, but there was a lot of team members that raised a lot more than that. So I think we were, we're at over seventy-five thousand. Seventy-eight thousand. Seventy-eight thousand. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Lauren. To, you know, beyond laundry, what else do you guys provide <laughs> for people who join the team? Uh, aside from just from uh, a, a great cause. Uh, well, we had a lot of in-kind donations this year, um, mainly from Scratch Labs, who provided all of our drink mix, and uh, and Honey Stinger, who provided some fuel. And then, um, so we're at every at the every first aid station every day. Uh, handing out peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and some scratch labs and um, and uh, that's jerseys. Ap apart from yeah, apart from the the laundry and the the matching fuel and kit. things, we had a matching kit that uh, Pactimo did for us. So she, she's too modest. They they provided so much support and encouragement along the way, both the members of the team that had Parkinson's and those who were just riding in support of those with Parkinson's that. Uh, I don't think we we would have had the same experience if it wasn't for Three, Lauren and Jenna and Polly. A lot of along. dancing. A lot of dancing. Yes. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> At 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's important to note that there were three people with Parkinson's disease that did the ride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard enough. Um, I think what Amanda said, you know, there's personal goals that people have, and there's 2,500 of those out there. But when you show up as part of this team and you see what people are capable of doing, uh, it's amazing, it really is. Yeah, and I think for me personally, every time I wanted to complain about whatever was hurting on me, things I didn't know that could hurt, um, you, I thought about some of the teammates that were doing it with Parkinson's and, you know, there wasn't complaining from them. I, I don't ever remember any of them saying, oh, I wish, you know, I could do this better, and I never heard that, and um, which makes, me personally not complain about it and you know I think Nadine said it well when she crashed the one day and the next day she's like I wanted to give up but I couldn't because I, I saw Margaret or John or someone who really could give up and wasn't giving up and so she's like I have to keep riding I she took some painkillers and just kept going <laughs> and so yeah. yeah and so it definitely puts um, life in perspective a little bit and it's it, it was a great experience I mean, I had a wonderful experience last year, but this year was was even better. And um, stepping up from honorary member to yes. full member. <laughs> yeah, and having, we had a wonderful dinner, a team dinner in Durango that oh, these great, ladies yeah. coordinated, and um, we did have some special guests there, which was just icing on the cake. And Connie Connie Carpenter, Bob Roll, Ron Kiefel. Ron Kiefel, Ron Kiefel. Ron Kiefel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Connie was actually um, our, our support for the first two days. Really? As well. She, yeah. She was making she was almond butter and jelly sandwiches yeah. with gluten-free bread, and making sure we had sunscreen on. And she was—it was great. She was—it um, was, it was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And so all those things, if you add them all up, it was just a fantastic experience. This is so hard for me because I'm such a radio guy and public speaker. I know I'm supposed to make eye contact there, but I feel so rude for not making it. I don't want everybody to see my bald spot, but that's where I go. Well, I got one too. <laughs> that's, that's hard to hide. <laughs> go with it. So three people on the team had Parkinson's. Kind of describe the disease a little bit. Um, why that is such a, you know, 
big deal that they were able to do that. Sure. So Parkinson's is a progressive neurodegenerative disease, um, also considered a movement disorder. And, and that is different for everyone who has Parkinson's. So really hard to say two people experience Parkinson's in the same way. And I think our three team members exhibited different symptoms. Um, but I think the, the, some of the symptoms that are, make it very difficult to do something like the accomplishment that they did uh, two weeks ago um, is balance. Is Balance can be a big challenge of movement, of course, as a movement disorder. Movement can be constricted and um, sort of fluidity, uh, speech can be affected, which can mean that it's, it's very hard to communicate, uh, communicate your needs. Um, and then um, a big part of uh, some people's experience with Parkinson's is, uh, is motivation and, and apathy and depression, which are, it's a part of Parkinson's for a number of people. And so to see people who are going well beyond that and not giving in to apathy, not, you know, inertia became determination and hope really and optimism was a big part of that week for, for our folks with Parkinson's and I think it was contagious for all of us. Yeah, and so, good. you know, one of our writers, Margaret, who was just brilliant uh, during her, her week, on her bike, she, was, she said, I don't feel as though I have Parkinson's. It, she didn't look it, that's what she <laughs> She yeah. put me at it. She, she dropped everyone. <laughs> she was great. And, but then, you know, getting onto the bike and getting off of the bike and right. moving and, right. and getting herself up and, and, and speaking, those were really big challenges. Yeah. And, and that's kind of one of the fun things for Margaret was that she got to spread awareness about Parkinson's just because getting on and off the bike was a challenge and she needed help. And so people would help her, and then she explains, I have Parkinson's disease. And, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. fantastic for somebody like her to be out there writing and, and spreading our message, and she's the face of who we are. Mm -hmm. And you think of Davis Finney, you think of the 7-Eleven team, Ron. Uh, those two are just fast friends. And one thing I've talked to that team about is just the camaraderie that they seem to have more than you've ever seen with other professional teams. And what I'm seeing right here, it, it just is... Davis Finney. I mean, the camaraderie that you all built. Did you know each other no. before the ride started? No, none I, of you did. No, because no. no. I, I thought you. I thought you were a couple when you came. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> so you hooked up so on day four. I'll tell you, he looks like a completely different person when he was on his bike than he looks like now. <laughs> and I felt that with most of the team that um, if I saw half of them on the street right now, I probably I may not recognize yeah. them. Because you're seeing everyone in their helmets and, and kits and everything, and they all look so much different. So, but I knew Lauren um, and Polly before. Yeah. yeah, I knew Lauren from last year. Yeah. So, so, but I mean, tell us. And again, this is to all three of you. Had, had you done a ride like this of this magnitude before? And we should talk a little bit about what ride the Rockies actually is. It's tough. Yeah. Um, I mean. And this was the longest route, actually, in the history of Ride the Rockies, with the detour we had to take because of the fire. So, mm -hmm. 545 miles, is that what it came down to? Something like that, yeah. Something elevation. something elevation. In how many days? Vertical peak. Seven days. Seven days, yeah. 540 miles. Yeah. yeah. I think it was the day after day after day long, was the, yes. the difficult portion yeah. and, and feeling, you know, the next, I, I don't really feel like riding today. My legs are a little tired. Yeah. And, and, and it wasn't You flat. have never done anything <laughs> like this before. I, I they all have. I've yeah. done it yeah. about seven times. Okay. And um, I've done it, you know, with friends and just gone out and do it. And just like I said, everybody's got their own sort of goals and objectives to just see what you can do. Uh, but this is the first time I did it with the, this group or even a large group. And, and it's a very different experience. Um, even though we all didn't ride together, we'd meet first thing in the morning, you know, we take pictures, they got tons of pictures of this. Um, and you just get to see everybody and then, you know, you'd meet up in the afternoons. Um, one of the people from New York actually drove me out to Telluride to start the ride. So he came to my house, picked me up, you know, after he'd come from the airport, drove me all the way out to Telluride to get started on the ride. We had never met each other before. Um, and I think that was symptomatic of just how friendly and engaging everybody was. Uh, as part of this team and some of the people had done it before but I think most of us were probably first-timers, is that right? 
Yeah, yeah, I think there were only three of us who wrote it last year and this year for the Davis Finney Foundation. Yeah. So it was a real learning experience for everybody yeah. during the week. And how big was the team last year? Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> yeah. This year, nineteen. Yeah. And yeah. kind of continuing question of. Well, I've done I've done rides that are similar, both here and in Europe, week long trips, and, and I've done the Alps and the Pyrenees and all. But you, you come out here, and the Rockies are a spectacular place to ride, and you throw the altitude in on top of it, and this week long ride is as difficult as anything that I've encountered before. But the thing that made it special was again being a part of the group and being a part of a very special group that has a purpose and a, and a great message uh, to send out so the entire experience was just more than just a week of riding through the mountains uh, and it, it, it was uh, something very special and something I hope to return to. Yeah, I mean, I've made we'll friends. We'll have you back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I made friends this <laughs> week that I, you know, assume we're going to be friends for a long time that came out of this. So, I mean, I got a lot more out of it than just riding around the Rockies for a mm -hmm. week. And there was never any sense of, I mean, I know it's not a race, and people go into something like this saying it's not a race, but there wasn't anyone who had to be the first Davis Finney Foundation team rider in every day? No. Uh -oh. We had an amateur rider on our team um, and our youngest member. Oh, yeah, and he was great. <laughs> he he uh, loved this. This was a, a dream week for him because yeah. he got to ride with um, George and Kathy the second day. And uh, for the rest of the week, he was with Wayne Stetna, who was challenging uh -huh. him to, you know, try a higher seat position, try all these different things to make him a better rider and better at racing. So that was exciting for him. He had never had mm -hmm. um, over five hour days. They were always sub five or sub four. So um, that's been And his, his father has Parkinson's, which is why he was yeah. uh, coming out too. He was from, uh, he's from Bethesda, Maryland. So that's why he joined our team. And I think it was a big leap of faith as a 19 year old, because this ride generally attracts an older set and to, mm -hmm. have, to have uh, Michael fly out here on his own, put his bike in a bike box and come do something he'd never done before and then have such a high, a high that week for yeah. him. It was really fun to watch. Yeah. One, fun to watch him have such a good week. So not so much that he wanted to come in first every day, but it was really fun for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, first two kids, we'd come in, we'd roll in, and he was already in for a few yeah. hours. And he then was glued you know. to those riders. Yeah. He just wanted to go with yeah. him. He I mean, said, he, yeah, he said he had never tried so hard to stay on on someone's wheel all yeah. week, so. Yeah. And we had one pair who was on a tandem. So we had uh, Pat and John on a tandem the whole week, mm -hmm. and, and they were hilarious. Yeah. And uh, I think their goal was to sort of be the last riders in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were joking the whole way. They were fighting like a married couple the whole <laughs> week. And uh, arguing with one another and laughing. And uh, they were wearing, their helmets had a, a cover that looked like a brain. So mm -hmm. that was a real good conversation starter for folks. Yeah. You know, why are you here? Why the brain? And so we got to talk about Parkinson's, and John has Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. So he was able to describe the science and why um, exercise, and, and specifically sort of forced intensity, working a little, your cadence a little faster than you would on your own, why that's so important for um, Parkinson's. And um, so that was a really interesting conversation starter for them. And they talked to a lot of people. <laughs> yes, they did. Yeah. Now, Ride the Rockies is tough to get into. They open registration and it fills right away. One of the benefits of joining the team is you've got a guaranteed, guaranteed, guaranteed slot, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lauren can talk about the wonderful yeah. connection that, that Chandler has, has given to us. I think it began actually um, at a um, press conference for the USA Pro Cycling Challenge. Chandler approached Davis and said, I want to help. And so I got in contact with him, and that's when uh, last year he donated 10 of these registrations to us. And um, this year he doubled that, and we're hoping that he'll do that again. So he's, yeah. he's been very gracious and generous to us, um, incorporating our foundation in the cycling seminars as well at, the, at each host town, so, or in some of them. So. Yeah. How does someone go about joining? Get in contact with Lauren, and she'll put you on a list. Yeah. And so as soon as we know how many spots we have for next year, which will probably be January January time frame, February, yeah. um, Lauren will send out an email to everybody, and 
and ask who is in, who's willing to make the commitment, the time commitment, the, the fundraising commitment, and then she'll allocate the spots accordingly. And I assume people who have been on the team kind of have first yes. right of refusal? Yes. Yeah. But we hope to have competitive. So Wait, Chandler, if you're, you're listening, we hope to have Chandler, we'll, we'll take 30 or 40 spots next year. Yeah. We had a huge amount of interest, people signing up for next year. So that was really exciting as well. But, you know, things happen. People in June don't know what next June is going to look right. like. But as we get towards the beginning of 2014, mm -hmm. people have a better sense. And, yeah, yeah. We and then we had a few folks who went through the lottery because our 20 spots were filled. And they went through the lottery, like oh, Rich did. Still. Yeah. And, and got in through the lottery and then joined our team. Has the experience from this year made you want to come back? It seemed to me like every one of you wants to, but has it also made you feel like I can get out there and fundraise even more than I did? Um, well, for me, it, it's, it was a bit different. Um, my wife, several years ago, uh, fundraised for a marathon. Her mother had a stroke and there was a marathon where she had to raise money for that. And so when I first uh, talked to Polly, I said, okay, I'll line up my wife because she knows how to do this. <laughs> and I talked to her and, and after about 10 minutes I went, you know, this is going to be harder than it sounds and I didn't want to dump it on her. So we just actually donated the money ourselves. Um, because uh, I do annually donate money to, you know, some different causes, including the schools that I went to, etc. But um, I felt this was a worthwhile uh, endeavor for myself. Uh, others raised money, so I mean, I think you can do it both ways, and obviously some people don't have the, the resources to just do that on their own. Um, but I think the fundraising has uh, an educational component because people learn about the foundation through this. Mm -hmm. So there's value in the fundraising because you touch more people. Yeah, I, feel, I, I personally feel like it's a, almost a self-marketing thing, and I, the fundraising has been challenging for me trying to tap into the right group of people that you know that you think will donate because I definitely feel like people have their allocations every year about okay I'm donating this money to this and and so just trying to find the right group of people that you know um, I've been amazed at the people that I see on the street and they see or when we were riding they would see what I was wearing and give me money or riding here in Boulder I ran into someone who I met for five minutes and donated money. And so those are the situations where um, it, it's really neat in how you're kind of s spreading the love a little bit. And so, yeah, I'll get there, and I think next year it will be easier because I'll have people that I know would donate and, um, and, and it have a place in their heart for it. So it's been, it's been a great learning mm -hmm. experience. <laughs> Randy's one of the well, top fundraisers. Yeah, uh, he's the pro. Um, yeah, but it's it's not. Well, there's a reason I'm asking this because a lot of people have a hard time getting out and raising money. So if you, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing special to my approach. As a matter of fact, I've been absolutely surprised by the results, somewhat unfortunately, because you, you try to raise money, and it's always you always feel that your family, your friends, co-workers are being approached by anybody and everyone. And you want to make sure that they understand that this is a very worthwhile cause and something that, that is well worth their donation. And I found that by getting the word out, uh, unfortunately, the unfortunate part is I found that so many of my family and friends have relatives or experience with Parkinson's. And unfortunately, this disease is something that needs to get under control and you find out it's, it's not something that people talk about on a daily basis mm -hmm. but when you start getting the word out that there are things that can be done there are foundations like the Davis Finney Foundation that are making you know strides and giving people hope on a daily basis then all of a sudden people come forward and they say well my grandmother had Parkinson's. My brother had Parkinson's. I've got a nephew. That I just found out my cousin has Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And you just don't, it's just not something people come forward with. But if they do, you can offer them information, information and the link to the Davis Finney Foundation and to people like Polly and Lauren that can get them in touch with the right people and make their life a much better life than they seem to think it is mm -hmm. when they're told that they have Parkinson's. And so from 
from that side of things, and in, in that respect, the fundraising has been a lot easier than fundraising for some other things where people assume they know and say, yeah, but I already give to you know X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. Now they think, wait, people are talking about this. I have somebody that's connected to this. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'd be, there's something that can be done. I'll be more than happy to help. I'll be more than happy to, to, to help the foundation. And I, I think that's encouraging. Um, and why I'm continuing to fundraise now, even after the ride's over. Um, we're following up with, with people um, who have made pledges prior to the ride and based on the amount of the ride you do or whatever. <laughs> and, and, uh, and leading into next year. And uh, it, it's something that's very important and I'll, I'll continue to, to keep uh, doing my part. I think what I learned doing the fundraising last year and doing it again this year is that you are surprised by people who and their generosity that you just didn't expect and, and that you have to get over that fear of asking mm -hmm. and not be apologetic because you believe so strongly in what you're doing and why you're doing it. And people, all people can say is no and that's all right. Yeah. And, and then train yourself to ask again next year because people start to expect that every year you're going to do something like this or this and you're going to ask them again. And they can always say no or they can re-up. And that, I think, has been really an interesting lesson for me, especially since we encourage so many people at the foundation or who are connected to the foundation to fundraise to actually go out and do that as well. So you also, as yeah. part of the team, you did your fundraising yeah. too. Yeah, yeah she's sure. amazing, CEO of the <laughs> foundation, and she's out there, one of the top fundraisers raising money. It's like, well, if Holly's doing it, then you know, <laughs> everybody's happy. <laughs> but you know, for the people who are watching this, um, you can be part of the team by donating. Yeah. You know, the Ride the Rockies yeah. is, is a non-trivial event like people have been describing here. And so if you're, if you're not up for, you know, doing that week-long ride, you can still be part of the team by participating, by donating. Mm -hmm. And um, I certainly appreciate that part. And I'm sure everybody else does. So the team is actually bigger than the 19 or 20 people who showed up to do the ride. Yeah. And this is one piece of, of the Davis County Foundation Victory Crew, our grassroots fundraising. Um, Ride the Rockies is becoming a really big fundraiser for us, uh, just because we're growing our team so much. But um, there's many other things that people can do to fundraise um, and be a part of supporting the tribe. And I mean, from something like a cornhole tournament, that's a new one for us this year, or a golf tournament, or, or even any little ride or event people can participate in and, and fundraise or just donate through that. Where do you get more information? www.davisfinneyfoundation.org mm -hmm. And Finney is P-H-I-N-N-E-Y. Mm -hmm. Unlike the dog here who is F-I-N. <laughs> 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 um, just in a, a one sentence summary from each of you, um, why you would encourage someone to do this next year? Oh gosh, the highlight of my year. Perfect. Um, your life will be better for it. Pressure. Yeah, <laughs> Darn it. I was going to say each of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's How about one too. word? Ditto? <laughs> yeah. Good enough. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way from when I did Ride the Rockies a year ago. I couldn't wait until this year. And, um, it's fantastic. That was a real run-on sentence. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like to talk. <laughs> um, friends and staff members become family. I want to have you all back on the show. This was great. I'm really glad we went ahead and just squished in. I felt <laughs> that camaraderie there. I was like, no, we got to be together. And uh, yeah, live from Retool, I'm George Thomas. Thank you, George.